Hi, I'm Dr. Keshav Malhotra. I'm the lab director of Rainbow IVF. And today we're going to discuss a little bit about embryo selection. Now we know that since the advent of IVF, one of the biggest, biggest challenges that remains in our field is to transfer one embryo, which results in one pregnancy, which results in one live birth. And this is something that we've been really working on for the last 40 or 50 years. We know that early days of IVF were challenged because there weren't any uh, ways of extending embryo culture. And in these scenarios, people were putting back multiple embryos. And thus, even if pregnancies were happening, there were a lot of multiple pregnancies that happened at that point of time, which was not the best outcome for our patients. With the advent of better embryo, embryological morpholo morphological assessments, we now know for sure what to expect at what particular time. And therefore, it becomes easy for us to basically assess the quality of the embryo based on these parameters. So if you look at the Istanbul consensus, we now know that a fur check a standardized for for check happens around 17 plus minus 1 hours an early cleavage check for ICSI happens around 26 plus minus 1 hour for IVF it happens around 28 plus minus 1 hours day 2 is 44 plus minus 1 day 3 is 68 plus minus 1 hours day 4 is 92 plus minus 2 and a day 5 assessment or a blastocyst assessment happens at around 116 plus minus 2 hours based on these criteria or these parameters we can now look at the quality of the embryo at this particular stage and then judge which embryo is the best for transfer. So let's start with the first stage of the embryo and that is the zygote or the 2PN stage. Now according to the Istanbul consensus again I think so this is one important document that you all should follow and basically what happened was Alpha came out with a consensus document with these prominent embryologists uh, who all gathered in Istanbul and there it was decided looking at all the different embryological scoring systems that are available uh, world over they all were compiled they all were reviewed and a consensus scoring system was then produced which probably is one of the most efficient ways of grading an embryo and this is something that most laboratories now are following world over. So when we look at the consensus scoring system for pronucleuses, they are now categorized into three uh, grades. <clears throat> you have grade 1 uh, or, a ca or category 1 which is symmetrical, basically equivalent to a, a Z1 or a Z2 uh, grade in the previous scoring system. Now what was Z1 and Z2? Z1 was basically when the pronucleuses were almost equal in size, they were aligned together the nuclear precursor bodies or the NPBs were aligned again at the metaphasal junction and they were between 3 to 7 in number. That was a grade 1 zygote from the earlier consensus system and a grade 2 was when one side is aligned and the other side is misaligned. That was grade 2. So both of these together now are category 1. Category 2 is non-symmetrical which basically includes other uh, peripheral arrangements of uh, pronucleuses. So let's say it's not centrally located, it's somewhere deviated to the periphery. <clears throat> In those scenarios, we will call it a Z2. And the third one is basically an abnormal pronucleus, which could be uh, pronucleuses with zero or one nuclear precursor body. It could be disjointed pronucleuses. It could be where one pronucleus is large and the other is very small. All of these could be categorized as uh, Z1, Z2 and uh, category 3. Now there are various examples. I'm going to just show you an image right now and you can take a screenshot of this and then try and assess the grading yourself. But basically this image covers all three different categories where you have a Z1 or a category 1 uh, which is basically the nuclear precursor bodies which are aligned in the junctions uh, and, cent and is centrally located. You have Z2 which is a peripheral pronucleuses and you have Z3 where you have abnormalities in the pronucleuses. <clears throat> now the next part of the embryonic assessment is basically cleavage stage assessment. Now cleavage stage generally happens at two day points which is day two and day three. 
and basically we are, there are three important factors that we are going to analyze when we are grading these embryos. The first is cell number, second is fragmentation and the third is multinucleation. Now when we come to a, the consensus scoring system for cleavage stage embryos, it basically signifies that the cell number should be corresponding with the time point. So let's say I'm assessing the embryo at day 2 then the cell number should correspond to 4 cell. If I'm assessing at day 3, it should be 8 cell or more than 7 cells and so on. The fragmentation is divided into 3. It's less than 10%, 10 to 25% and more than 25% and multinucleation is basically either present or absent. Now when we look at all 3 parameters together, we can categorize a grade 1 embryo as appropriate for cell number, less than 10% fragmentation and no evidence of multinucleation. Grade 2 will be basically where you will still have the same number of cells uh, for that particular stage but my fragmentation can vary from 10 to 25% and grade 3 is either severe fragmentation or presence of multinucleation. So these are the three different categories that you basically have when you are looking at cleavage stage embryos. It is important for us to assess these parameters because when we look at the potential of the embryo and when we look at technology as well, let's say I am a user of time lapse now and when I look at the technology as such, time lapse basically looks at morphokinetics. And if you don't have access to time lapse in your laboratory, then if you are assessing the embryo at these different five, six time points, it becomes easier for you to then judge which embryo is going to implant or which embryo has the highest potential for implantation. And what I mean by this statement is that you would want to take a cumulative assessment of the embryo from right from day one to day five and not just assessing the embryo on day five itself. So let's say I have seven blastocysts within my laboratory and on day five and out of these seven, five of them are 4AA or top quality. <clears throat> now how do I choose one out of these five? I don't want to make a random choice. So in this scenario, I will look at how the embryo performed at day three. I will also look at how the embryo performed on day two. I'd also look at how the embryo performed on day one or what was the score of the zygote and then basically prioritize which embryo has the highest potential or which embryo followed the best parameters. And this could be a good way to basically select embryos for transfer. Now this was a little bit about cleavage stage embryos. Let's move on to the next parameter which is compaction or day four. Now like we mentioned earlier, this generally is assessed at around 92 hours plus minus two. And at this particular stage, all of the blastomeres within the embryo should basically compact and form a ball-like structure. So when I look at the grading system for compacted embryos, it's again divided into three grades where you have grade one where all of the cells or majority of the cells have entered into the fourth round of division and have also um, compacted fully. So all of the cells are then forming like a compacted mass. That's a good quality modeler. A grade 2 is basically an embryo which has had its fourth round of cell division and majority of the embryo is involved in compaction. So let's say one or two blastomeres are left behind but everything else is compacted that becomes a grade 2 uh, modeler. And a grade 3 modeler is basically where either you have disproportionate co uh, compaction which involves less than half of the embryo or you have uh, at least two to three cells which are completely discrete. Uh, which are showing blastomeres or there is no evidence of compaction itself. So these could be scenarios where uh, uh, you could then categorize a modeler based on all of these. And obviously when I'm mentioning grading systems, a grade one embryo has a higher potential, a grade one cleavage embryo has a higher potential to become a grade one compacted embryo has a higher potential to become a grade one blastocyst. So that's how we are basically trying to uh, generalize this. Now coming to the blastocyst itself, now this is probably the most important grading that is there for all embryologists. I'm sure everyone here follows the Gardner system for 
grading blastuses. That's the most standardized, widely used grading system for blastuses. But there are lots of other grading systems as well, like the Spanish consensus, like SART. And again, when I talk about the consensus statement, it basically looked at all of the systems that are available and then compiled and formed a more comprehensive grading system for blastocysts itself. So when I look at only this uh, system, I'll just compare it with Gardner system as well. The blastocyst, like we all know, is divided into three components. You have your stage of development or the size of the cavity. That's the first component that we're judging. The second component that we're judging is the inner cell mass. And the third component that we're judging is the trophectal. So when I look at, when I talk about the consensus system, the stage of development is now categorized into four instead of six from the Gardner system. ICM and Trophectoderm are the same. It's three categories, but instead of having an alphanumeric system, which the Gardner system uh, takes in, we now only have a numerical grading system where it's grade one, two, three, four, each of these components. So let's, I'll show, you, I'll, uh, I'll show you this chart. I think it's visible uh, in the presentation as well. So when I look at the grade of the uh, stage of development, grade one is an early blastocyst. Again, corresponds to the same grade one of the Gardner system. Grade two is a blastocyst. This corresponds to basically grade three of the Gardner system. Grade 3 is an expanded blastocyst, which corresponds to grade 4 from the Gardner system. And 4 in the consensus is a hatched or a hatching blastocyst, which corresponds to 5 and 6 from the Gardner system. Okay, so you have 1, 2, 3 and 4 in this particular consensus scoring. The inner cell mass instead of A, B and C is 1, 2 and 3. Same uh, definitions. 1 is prominent, easily discernible, many cells compacting to form a tightly adhered inner cell mass. Two is easily discernible, but maybe loosely grouped cells uh, forming the inner cell mass. And three is very difficult to discern or very few cells forming the inner cell mass. And again, this cor corresponds to the same A, B and C from the Gardner system. Trophectoderm again similar. One is many cells forming a cohesive epithelium. Two is few cells forming a loose epithelium and three is very few cells. Again, same correspondence with the a, B, and C. And you can see a few examples of the different grading systems um, in the presentation now. So now when we look at basically blastocysts at this particular point, we have to understand that having a standardized approach towards embryo grading can actually help us in minimizing the conformities or minimizing the differences in pregnancy rates and implantation rates when different embryologists are choosing embryos. And that's one important factor to uh, consider in order to standardize practices within your laboratory. Each of you should be choosing the same embryo as all of your teammates. And that's where practicing embryo grading is very important. There are a few references that you can basically look at. The Escheret Atlas is fantastic and basically talks about each and every parameter in like quite a lot of depth and detail and that's one tool that uh, all embryologists should basically read at least once in every maybe six months or so and apart from that just look at other like images online even within your own laboratory do an exercise with all of your embryologists where everyone's looking at a blastocyst and then grading it together do this exercise with your clinicians as well so that they also learn a little bit about embryo grading and uh, learn about the practices that are there within your own laboratory because a lot of clinicians don't know much about embryology. So these are certain things that can actually help you in improving uh, which embryo to transfer. Now, last thing that I want to talk to you about uh, in this particular lecture is basically the different parameters that can help you in making better blastocysts. So apart from the Istanbul consensus which basically talks on grading you have other consensus statements like the Cairo consensus and based on this consensus uh, I'll, I'll show you an, an infographic right now so what I've tried to do right now is to, like I've compiled uh, the different factors that can affect the quality of the blastocysts in this one infographic and basically divided into four parameters one is the gametes 
where we basically look at uh, sperm DNA fragmentation, oocyte quality, exposure and patient age affecting the quality of the blastocysts and any abnormality in all, all of the four that I've mentioned above can actually compromise the quality of the blastocysts. Then you have culture conditions where looking at the Cairo consensus we know that uninterrupted culture improves outcomes, we know that oil overlay is essential, we want a complete culture suite and we also want low oxygen and humidified environment for our embryos. Apart from this, in the laboratory itself, you want low VOC, you want low particulate matter, you want low light exposure and you want a KPI driven laboratory and that definitely helps us in improving outcomes. And lastly is the skill of the embryologist which also plays a role in getting good blastocysts. And when I talk about skill of the embryologist, there are again four essential parameters minimizing stress, timing the procedures adequately, having good skills of cryopreservation and having good skills of embryo biopsy. If you have any more questions for me regarding embryo selection based on morphology or any of the other parameters that can aid embryo selection, get in touch with me on my email which is mentioned here or on my social media or you can get in touch with the EART uh, uh, basically on their social media or their email ID and we'll be happy to answer your queries.